I want to thank one of our incredible sponsors, BrainTap. You may have listened to our podcast with the founder of BrainTap, Patrick Porter. And if you did, you'll definitely want to get involved in BrainTap. And if you didn't, please, please, I strongly recommend that you go back and listen. It's so incredibly informative. Here's what BrainTap can do. You can literally build your brain fitness with BrainTap's mobile app and wearable headset. Everyone here at Outcomes the Sun podcast has had and continues to have positive results with brain tap. Your brain is guided from awake and reactionary patterns to intuitive and creative responses. Brain tap is backed by neuroscience and research and was developed by Patrick Porter himself. Brain tap creates a symphony of brainwave activity to optimize your brain's potential, restore your ability, balance your energy, and calm your brain. And listen, it is a game changer when it comes to sleep. This technology is truly a gift and I am so incredibly grateful to be able to share it with you. Hi everyone, I'm Marielle Hemingway and I'm with my partner, Melissa Yamaguchi on the Outcomes the Sun podcast. And we are excited today because we have really cool guests. And I'm going to let uh, Melissa do the intro because she actually uh, did an event with them. But um, this is going to kind of, I don't know, it made me kind of turn my head when I heard about it. When I, Because we're talking to two veterinarians, which is really pretty awesome. Um, but no, but I had no idea that there was an issue with mental health issues it, with, uh, you know, veterinarians. Who knew? Anyway, so Melissa, I want to throw it over to you to introduce these two incredible women. And we're going to have an amazing conversation today about mental health. Absolutely. Thank you, Meryl. Doctors Jan and Jill have been in my life and my family's life for well over 15 years. I took my dog who passed away last year at the age of 16 to them when she was a puppy. So it's they've been in our lives and our family's lives for a long time. Um, friends, friends, family, clients, doctors, the whole bit. I recently had the good fortune of being invited by the two doctors to be a part of a a nonprofit that they formulated. And when we were in the middle of our initial board meeting, Dr. Jan revealed that veterinarians suffer from a high incidence of death by suicide. And I was, I really took my breath away because we, I've always known that doctors do have a higher incidence of death by suicide, but I always had heard that it was in the dental profession. And she said, no, we, we hit pretty high. And so I, it, it shocked me and I want the doctors to not only address that, but to talk to you about some of the, some of the um, projects and the initiatives that they're putting forward to address the needs of the community of veterinarian and beyond. But I want to know, I want to share a little bit of information that I did on some research and understanding the high incidence of suicide rates in the world of veterinarian, veterinary. And so the Female veter veterinarians are three and a half times higher, have a higher rate of incidence than the general population of women. And when I start diving into why, what are all these reasons? And I, Doctors Jan, Jan and Jill can, can address this far more succinctly and intelligently than I, but some of the unique issues were um, student debt, which is still an issue for a, a large population of, of our society, but student debt was one of them. Um, the the daily demands of dealing with the demands of, of people with their pets and then the, the, the concern that the doctors have. People get into the art and the craft and the service of taking care of animals because they love animals and they care about them. So the, the doctors become distressed when the animals aren't doing well. But they also can be vilified by the owners. If the owner feels that their doctor has not taken care of their pet in the way that they deem they should be, even though they're not the expert. So they can vilify the doctor. And as much as doctors may be prepped and schooled, educated on how to handle the euthanizing part of that segment of it, it still is, is a burden on the back and it's heavy on the heart. And couple that, the weight of euthanization with the fact that sometimes their patients have to opt 
to that resort because they can, cannot afford the surgery. When the doctors know that the surgery would save the pet, but the people can't afford the surgery. So euthanizing is the answer and that all that continues to weigh on them. But I wanted to, um, the, the suicide rates among our doctors are the highest they've been since World War II. And I'm so proud to, to know doctors Jan and Jill because they are proactive they're intelligent. They're addressing this with their their eyes on the future. And I'm so excited, ladies, for you to be here. I've known you for so long. I've always admired and adored both of you. I'm really happy you're with us to share with our audience all that you've got going on. Thank you. That that was very um, accurate information, Melissa. Mm -hmm. And um, it sums it up quite nicely about what's going on in our industry. I think the one thing I would add is, you know, a lot of Veterinarians are introverted scientists for the mm -hmm. most part, right? I'm just, you know, generalizing, of course. And when you have that coupled with all the emotional stuff that goes on between client and doctor and the tech staff, um, it's a lot. You know, it, the days can be grueling emotionally, physically, mentally. And when you couple that with a financial component, which Everyone knows cost of everything's going up, including veterinary medicine and cost of care. Um, it it burdens the whole team, you know, when someone can't afford care and everybody wants to help the pet mm -hmm. and save the animal. And it comes down to decisions that are tough, like euthanasia. Um, and I think, you know, no one feels good in that case. And And then, you know, clients naturally sometimes have other things on their shoulders, including what's going on with their pet. And the pet is so bonded to their family that, you know, naturally they get frustrated and they want to throw it on who's ever, whoever's in front of them, which is us, the team. And so, you know, the, the veterinary industry is very much in crisis in terms of losing um, a lot of our colleagues to suicide and burnout. You know, um, there's a lot of people that have left the profession because it's just too much and, and they don't want to stick around. And yet we're not creating more veterinarians at a quicker rate. We, I mean, there's only so many vet schools in the country that can produce uh, veterinarians. And um, when people are leaving the industry or um, committing suicide, it's not helping our profession. So it's, it's getting even tighter. And I think people might acknowledge this is that they they know that it's hard to get in with a vet now, you know, and especially after COVID um, things have gotten tighter. People have gotten pets. So there's more demand and it's harder to get in with a veterinarian. Yeah. These okay. days, so. I have noticed um, in our little area, I live in Idaho and I've noticed in our area, there's only one vet night. It's a vet that I've gone to for years, but he's the only vet that does, that is 24 hours. Like you can contact him 24 hours. But I mean, he's bedraggled. I'm not going to lie. This poor man. <laughs> I mean, he's got yeah. a staff and he's got a great team, but it's, it's a stress. And I can see that on him. I lost two dogs this year. Um, you know, one, one was 22. So my God, <laughs> like he, he really probably should have been on his way out a little bit sooner, but he was doing really well. Anyway, but we, it wasn't euthanasia. He, he just died. And then the other one, you know, it turned out he had cancer. He was just riddled with cancer. We, you know, he was slowing down for months. You think, oh my gosh, you must be getting old. It was a border collie. And, um, you know, it turned around and, and we, we got him checked up and it was, it was bizarre. Cause you know, and, and you know, this better than I do the relationship they have with their, with their owner is so profound. I mean, the minute he knew that we knew it was like, he could let go. It was like, he was holding on yeah. for us to get the picture that things weren't, weren't that good. Anyway, long story short, he also passed within five days. Um, but, they, but I have noticed that in our small area that nobody does emergency care here. Like, and, and it's, yeah two hour it's an hour and a half to two hours away to get your dog to you know if you get hit on the weekend if a dog gets hit by a car on the weekend it, like it, you're never gonna make it right and that's and that's hard and now i know that, 
because of speaking with you that that it's just because you know the demand is is high and and probably they're putting limitations on what they can do probably because of these emotional reasons would you would you say that yeah and especially in the emergency i think the burnout ratios or or the percentages are even higher than like jill and our general practice right um veterinarian and so we're like your family doctor right but er definitely has a higher incidence of burnout than we do. Oh, it's so hard. I just go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So it's not only, you know, just the, I think the on the job or factors related to the profession, but you know, it's also outside factors besides student loan debt. I mean, I had one doctor told me she has $500,000 worth of student oh loan God. debt and living people don't realize like veterinarians don't make the kind of salaries that human medical professionals make. So you know, wow. California is an actual high market. And I would say the average, you know, salary for like a general practice um, veterinarian is probably somewhere in the realm of like 120 or 30 thousand dollars a year. And so when you have, you know, three, four, five hundred thousand dollars worth of debt and you got to pay for a home in California, it's like it's stressful, you know. Oh and God. so it's not only the debt, debt burden, but it's also. Um, you know, the profession now is about 80% women, where it used to be the opposite, maybe even 20, 30 years ago, where it's more male dominated, um, but the profession has attracted a lot more, uh, more women. Um, and with that, you know, a lot of these um, young women, they become mothers. And, you know, now it's, it's like, you know, there's this guilt that comes up, you know, balancing like work life balance, you know, the demands of, you know, raising a family and work and long hours and just stress. And so there's just, you know, it just everything just piling up. It's on overwhelming. That really negatively. Um, it's overwhelming. And exactly. You have done, I mean, according to Melissa, you really uh, have taken this, this issue very, very seriously. And it's why we're talking to you. I would love for you to explain to uh, Melissa and I, but of course our audience, more importantly, um, what you're doing kind to, to make a difference. Like, how are you changing this? I, I, I guess it's the culture, the environment, the community. How are you, what are you introducing into the community to, to make a difference? You know, oh, Ohana Pet Hospital is what Jill and I had started with our other two partners. And when we first launched the hospital, we wanted to basically take care of the team, right? If we take care of our team, they will take care and deliver great service to our customers and great care to our pets. And that was the philosophy that we stood behind. And we still stand behind that today. Um, over the years, the burnout and suicide levels have become higher. And But when we started the hospital, our focus was always to take care of the team. And so we implemented different strategies. We tried so many different things and I'll let Joe expand on that um, from the start of Ohana to now that we've learned quite a bit as to what works, what may not work so well and what the team needs um, to stay happy and healthy as best possible. And although you could argue it's not necessarily our responsibility to take care of their own personal needs mm -hmm. um, at home, um, we try to provide as much resource as possible for them so that they can stay balanced, they can stay healthy, they can get the, um, you know, if, if they need therapy sessions, you know, for, for free, they can get it through our health insurance or our life insurance policies through employee assistance programs. Um, if they needed, you know, uh, elderly care advice, if they need financial planning, all of that, we brought that to our hospital. And so that's what we've been baking under Ohana. I'll let Joe expand on that a little bit more as to what we've tried. Great. Yeah. So for those of you that don't know, Ohana means family in Hawaiian. So some of you may know that from the Disney movie, Lilo and Stitch. Mm -hmm. um, but basically our hospital was founded, you know, with values of compassion and caring and a family feel so that it's not only our um, clients that we, you know, consider we want our staff to treat as family, but also each other. And so we told them that, like, you know, we want you guys to think and treat each other as like kind siblings, be kind to everybody, be compassionate to each other, as well as the clients. And, and of course, the pets is the most important thing. But, you know, the, the, we fostered a, a really nice culture at Ohana. And I think that's where it starts. And so people feel secure. They feel supported. 
um, and they feel basically they feel love like family. And so some of the things that, you know, we've tried with them, um, you know, to help them, like Jan says, there's a lot of resources we provided. But I think the main thing is I think we've always been sort of like wellness focused practice. And so when I say wellness, we're talking about, you know, balancing physical, spiritual, emotional and mental health, you know, from giving them training and education to support the mental so they improve their skills. We have very structured training at Ohana. Um, we provided um, emotional support. We brought in a like a like a it's not, it's not a psychiatrist, but a therapist yeah. who specializes in grief and yeah. loss. Um, and compassion fatigue, and we brought her in um, to provide services for free to our staff. Um, In the physical realm, we know we used to do like what we call Ohana Fit Club. It was like physical (laughs) fitness challenges to encourage them to like eat better and exercise. And um, yeah, and and then, you know, I think one of the other cool things we've done too is we, you know, we've done extensive um, communication training. So that's the sort of other piece with them just you know, part of it is under, learning to understand different personalities, um, learning to how under, understand people communicate differently, and just mm-hmm. to protect them because you can't control someone's reactivity or reaction, right? But you can control right. how you perceive it and how you take it and how you re- thus react to them. And so, you know, we, we have an excellent client service manager that's put together an empathy training program uh, for our staff, and it, she's wonderful at it. And I, you know, it's really helped them um, to manage like these difficult emotional situations. And the last thing I'll, we've done is I'll let Jan talk about it's our new philosophy on uh, work-life balance and scheduling. Yeah. So this kind of, this uh, new um, model that we implemented at Ohana is called, we call it 30 is the new 40. <laughs> and this kind of came about during COVID. You know, we had a time where we put the team on work share because we weren't, we weren't sure what was going to happen early during the COVID months. Um, where we pulled the team down from a four-day work week to a three-day work week, and we were working um, at a 75% of normal. And we found that people were calling out less, you know, they were willing to jump in and help out if, you know, somebody did have to call out. And the team was just happy, yeah. you know. I mean, they've always been happy, but they were happier, you know. Isn't it fascinating and, what people will do when they know they're appreciated? Yeah. And so what we did was a model where, I did a massive spreadsheet and and showed the partners, okay, if we jump everybody's pay up so that they're making what they were making in 40 hours, we took it in two phases. The first phase was 35 hours. So they're making the same amount in 40 hours as they were in 35. And then another jump phase two to go to 30. Then what we did was launched it in October of last year. And we started, we surveyed the whole team, go, who wants to go at 30, who wants to go to 35 and who wants to stay at 40? Because if you stay at 40, you'll still get the two to $3 an hour jump. So you're just earning more money. And right. some of those teammates were motivated to do that because they would just want to make more money and not have to do anything different, not have to take on a second job. So um, it was about a third split equally. And there was no pattern to age kids i could not find a pattern right you know when i looked at who did what it was very individualized and so we went down to 35 hours for those that wanted it some individuals got to go to 30 but they didn't you know necessarily get another pay bump in that realm it was really hard financially to get you know to go past this 35 and we just finally nailed that in uh, about a couple months ago and so our whole team has moved um for the ones that wanted to 35 and the ones that, you know, everybody got a paid jump. So everybody was happy about that. And we were balancing that with how much, you know, how, how much is coming in on the revenue side um, and keeping the customers happy because we don't want to just throw that on the customers and have the, the pay rates go up. Right. You know, that's not fair either. To them. Right. And it managed, it really did work. We were able to hire people, you know, we were, we had to fill about 16 positions and we filled them within a couple of months. And um, we still are very well staffed in our hospital compared to other hospitals out there. To give you an example, most hospitals strive for a five support staff to one doctor ratio. Mm -hmm. In reality, out there, it's about two to three support staff to one doctor. At Ohana, we have about six support staff to one doctor. That's That's so good. Yeah. You know what's so wonderful about and this so, is that you have taken, you know, the American model of of 
the work ethic and you know we're all americans are like how many millions of hours can i work and all that stuff but the exhaustion level and the sleep deprivation is creating you know their level of making mistakes when you're sleep deprived or mm-hmm. you are so speaking our language you know melissa and i talk about this on the on the podcast all the time because my belief is that lifestyle choices that you make improve your mental your mental health, your physical, mental, emotional, spiritual health, as Jill had said. It's so important that, you know, you have to look at the individual and then creating a work, a work space, environment, community culture that says, hey, you can be paid just as much and you'll probably be far more effective in less time. And we don't think, you know, Americans don't think that way. We're not programmed that way. We're, you know, we're designed to do too right. much. And then, but the productivity and the, and the way we do things is kind of, it lessens the value, you know, cause I think you see it more in, in Europe and Scandinavia that they, they just value people, human, human time more. And I think that we need to change our culture to what you're doing. It's, it's just so amazing. I'm, I'm, I'm just thrilled. Well, I'll double that, double that on top of the fact that, that Jen and Jill are Japanese and my husband is Japanese. So I can speak, I can speak honestly here. This the, 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 that natural, that original culture is very work driven also. So the fact that the, the two ladies from Hawaii and they've got kind of, they've, they've been blessed with this kind of a Ohana, aloha, mahalo spirit. And so they have this approach, like, let's, let's address this. Let's, let's approach this differently. And I want to, I want to make sure before we're, we're gone that we have a, for our listeners, you also provide business consulting. Letting yeah, other she people said that. That's amazing. Work on this. So they're, they're, these, their, their business consulting is worth looking into. Their business practice is amazing. But I also want you both to touch on the nonprofit. And because I'm so excited by what you're doing there. Yeah. So, and, and, you know, the reason why Jill and I are focused on the business consulting aspect is a lot of burnout comes because of poor management, yeah. poor leadership also in the workplace, right? And so we're trying to combat that differently by training managers, which is what our passion is too, um, to, to show them how to manage compassionately, you mm-hmm. know, not just cut people off at the knees, you know, listen to them, see why they're not performing or not, why they're not showing up to work um, the way you expect them to. Right. And a lot of it, like Joe said, is communication training. And so that's what we focus on. So where this is all headed is, um, you know, our industry is being swallowed up by corporate America. And when they do that, because the pool of labor is so small, everyone is dangling serious cash in front of doctors and vet tech staff to try to get them to on their teams. But the way they make that money back is by literally driving them to the ground. You know, they have high volume targets and revenue targets and, and that's not great. And so it's not a sustainable model, right. For our industry, it just causes more people to hate their jobs and leave the industry, which is Mm -hmm. not good. So what we are trying to launch with uh, Melissa is Lokahi foundation, which is a nonprofit Lokahi means collaboration and unity in Hawaiian. And this is going to be a full-fledged community effort between um, the college that we work with is Ventura College, where we put in a two-year associate's degree veterinary technology program that's designed to help um, create more registered veterinary technicians. And Joe built the whole curriculum with the college faculty um, and got it accredited a few weeks ago, which is amazing. Um, And with our local business owners and other veterinary colleagues to create a training and a wellness campus so that we can teach all of the lessons that we've learned through Ohana to our other colleagues so that we can turn this ship around, you know, and, and get ahead of the whole burnout piece and try to just make chip away at it and make strides to create a more healthier Um, environment, workplace environment, not just for veterinarians, but also it could be applied to dentistry. You know, it could be applied to dentistry. 100%. Well, one of the things that you'd shared at the meeting the other day was that um, the the practice of veterinarianism is under agriculture, which I don't know why I didn't even think. Of course, you know, I grew up on a 
farm. I know that the horses and the land, I get and the cow. Yeah, land. right. For some reason, I didn't think about it. And so in your logo, do you guys have a copy of your logo with you? By any chance you can show our audience or we can put it up on the end if you, if you let us have it. Their logo is so smart. It's this triangle, which is the, in feng shui, is the balance, is the symbol of balance. And it's this triangle of the different aspects of what matters to the, to the nonprofit. And it's the animals, it's, it's a hum, mankind, humankind where, and then it's, it's the agriculture. So the logo is this, it's, it's really pretty and it, they've done very beautifully, but it's this, these three aspects of it with the paw print, with its heart, you got the human hands with the heart, and then you got this plant coming from the heart. It's all about our land, our people, and our animals. And it's so beautifully done that there's, it's, I think what we, what I love most about what you're both doing is that it's a knock on the noggin mm -hmm. to remember that this journey on our planet, whatever field of work we've elected to fall into, is, is precarious at best. And so what we're doing matters on a day-to-day -day basis. And you two have, have really put your fingers on the pulse of what's taking place, whether by a natural understanding and observation or by emergency of being forced to see it. You've taken your you've taken your knowledge of this and decide to be progressive. And everybody that Meryl and I um, have had the good fortune of, of speaking with or having having on the show have had that exact same thread. That's the recurring motif of everyone we've had on. Every the leaders of the industry have said, "Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hang on a minute. I love what I'm doing, but I'm noticing that this part is a dark cloud." that threatens to damage the industry I love, and I know it can be better. And you guys are trailblazers, not only because you're women in the field that was predominantly men for so long, but you're trailblazers because you're, you're stepping back and saying it's not just about the bottom line. It's not just about grinding you into the ground and replacing you with the next guy. It's really about honoring the spirit of the individual so that he or she can honor those around them. Um, I, you said something earlier about not that many people coming into the field, and it reminded me that Marilyn and I learned, I don't know, gosh, I think we were in Florida, Marilyn, at a, can, a place where you were speaking one time, and they were telling us that nobody's entering into the field yes. of social work. The, mm -hmm. the people that are going in to do social work are dwindling down so much that they're having a hard time finding therapists, so that when we have people on the, at the at what they believe to be the end of their rope, looking for help to, find, to help them in therapy, they're, yeah. they're few and far between. And so it's when, when you, when we step back and realize that people are not going into our industries that demand big hearts and yeah. every practice does you, you demand, you, you must have heart and compassion. You cannot be robotic. So yeah. it, these industries that demand the big heart, we're failing them if we don't stop and breathe life back into that heart and see them. And you, you two have consistently been this way. This isn't just new rhetoric because it's on the it's on the the lips of the latest headlines. You guys have lived this life and been this way for a long time. I want to make sure that we get all of your information um, at the end so that our listeners can tune into what you're doing and support. Absolutely. You, um, you really, it's really worth, yeah, it's, it's, it's worth really talking. and and we it, you know you provide that for us and and we'll put that on our link and you know and and everything because what you're doing is so important and we're so grateful to you. I'm so, I'm thrilled that you're, it, you're just approaching it in, in, in a way that every industry should, it, you know, it, whether it's veterinarian or social work or whatever, it just, it, I, you know, I honor you. And what does Ohana mean again? Tell me again. What? Family. 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 Oh, Family. Ohana. <laughs> Listen, did you not watch Lilo and it. Stitch? Okay, this is I'm the sorry. thing, man. My kids are a little older. <laughs> Whatever, my kids are as old as they are, these girls. Anyway, so you guys are amazing. Oh, that's the kind of we've come we we come to the end of this show. I'd love to speak to you again. I'd love to keep keep you know, keep in touch with what you're doing with the foundation. And um thank you. Thank you for your courage to, you know, break new ground. Um, and 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 create an environment probably against a lot of odds and 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 make it successful and and we want to help support that and and thank you again for coming on outcomes the sun podcast we'd love to speak to you again everybody who's listening we will provide links so that you can you know you can watch them and also maybe donate to their foundation 
and also vote, donate to ours. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm just kidting. No, I'm not. not kidding. No, you're not. I mean, I'm, you know what I mean? <laughs> no, it's it, really, yeah. The, the ladies have a lot to offer. They've got a, several different, they've got their fingers in several different subjects and projects and they're worth following. So yeah, we'll put the links up. Definitely yeah. Thank you so much, ladies. So much. I mean, yeah. really, it's, it's an honor to talk to you. And thank you, Melissa, once again. Cool. Cool info. Yeah. Well, thank you. you. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today on Out Comes the Sun. Uh, you can listen to our podcast on Spotify, on Apple, and on YouTube. And you can donate to the Mariel Hemingway Foundation at the Mariel Hemingway Foundation.org. And I want to spell Hemingway for you H E M I N G W A Y dot org. I only say that because a lot of people put two M's and that just won't work. Um, also, on if you're watching on YouTube, you can go to the donate button at the bottom and it will take you right to a link with a QR code. And uh, if you go to MarielHemingway.org, you can also press the donate button and be able to donate to the foundation, which is designed to help guide people towards finding the right solutions for their mental health issues. Um, that is my goal. I'm just trying to raise money so I can come up with an app and a website that has all the information you could possibly want to know about mental health and where to go. But we are in the process of making that happen and your donation means so much to us. So thank you so much and we'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.